of tonight's lecture, I'm going to go through the process of creating my database. This is the same process that you guys have to go through in the case of your projects. Okay? <coughs> the database is going to be built in a MySQL database server. The WAMP server will have as one of the services a MySQL database server. Okay? So you should already have that server up and running. Website. Okay? When you hit your local host and the web server is up and running, green, that means the Apache web server and the MySQL database server are both up and running, and you hit the local host, you will get this website as one of your websites. That website, the PHP MyAdmin, is a website that comes bundled with the WAMP server. It's a website built in PHP that will allow you to manipulate your databases. It's really cool because if you think about it, okay, wait a minute, you downloaded a web server and a database server, and with it, you downloaded also a website that runs under that web server that manipulates databases in that database server. It's not the only piece of software that you can use to create your database. And I'm going to show you another one. Not a website one. A standalone one. Okay? Let's go through the web one first. It's called PHP My Admin. This is it. When you hit it, localhost PHP My Admin, you will get in here all the databases that you have. I have a whole bunch of them probably close to a hundred of them because they come from projects from many of the students in your case when you hit it you should find like one or two that's all you're gonna find okay in here you can do all these different things this is actually managing manipulating your database server to create databases so you can create your database using this tool. Okay? That's not the only tool. I also have and I have shared with you guys that tool. It's right here under software. It's a MySQL GUI tool. You don't need any installation. It's a zip that you download when you download it and unzip it zip it anywhere you want it in my case I unzip it into MySQL and it will create a MySQL GUI tools folder if I'm there I'll find one two three four executables one of which is called MySQL query browser you double click on it. This is it. It's a standalone application. You tell it, I have a database server on the local host listening through port 3306. Yes, database MySQL will be a service just like the Apache web server running behind the scenes will be listening through any request through port 3306. Okay? And Typically, no password. Please do not put a password. Okay? In any of the databases that you create. Click OK. What happens if you put a password? 
when you send me your project with your database, I'm going to try to run your project against that database. And I don't know what your password is. So what's going to happen to your grade? Okay. So this is this. This is the standalone application. Look, all the databases that it show me on the web, they're here. See that? The same that you find here. This is the web interface. This is the standalone interface. Pick your poison. Okay? Either one is fine. Either one will do the job. Now, that I have <coughs> clarified what are the tools that we're going to be using, then let's dive into how I created my database. My database comes from a long process of me understanding what is it that I'm building. And this is a process that you guys have been struggling f with the last six weeks. Okay? You should be pretty much clear about what is it you're building by now. And if you are not, you're in trouble. What I'm building comes from setting up a problem statement, a very high level description of what is it that I'm trying to service. Right? What is what is the need that I'm trying to supply? And I have created ten, ten different services, ten different services that my website will supply. Okay? And to have a better idea of what my system looks like, I have designed a domain model in which all the entities, the main entities and their attributes are depicted in a diagram and shows their relationships. Only until you hit this stage, you're ready to create your database. But you have to be very clear. First of all, you have to have all your entities. I have seen students that provided me a problem statement, highlighted the nouns, created a whole list, six, seven of them, and then I go and look at the diagram, and it talks about menus, and it talks about stuff that is not even in the list. Are you kidding me? What are you building? The entities in the diagram come from the list. If it's a small entity, it's probably an attribute of a much bigger entity. Okay? But attribute or entity, they should be put in the diagram. So, if you take a look at this diagram, my last version of my diagram, you will see that all these guys are in there. Okay? Because that's... I'm clear of what I'm building. So let's review what is it that I'm building. I'm building a timesheet. Each timesheet will have an ID. That's a primary key that identifies one timesheet from the other. What are the attributes of my timesheet? An employee ID, which is a foreign key to the ID of the employee that belongs this timesheet to. The status code that will tell me what's the status of my timesheet. Is it submitted? Is it pending? Is it paid? What is it? It will show the period ending date of my timesheet. The period ending date will always be the last Sunday of that week. It will have the department code, which is a foreign key to the department where this timesheet is being charged to. And it will have not 
hours, not days, not minutes. It will save hours worked for Monday, for Tuesday, for when, all the way to Sunday. It doesn't get more clear than that. Let's talk about the employees. The employees will also have an ID that will uniquely identify each employee from the other. It will have a name. Employee has to have a name. An email address. An employee type. Is it an hourly employee? A manager? Uh, payroll? Human resources? CEO? What is it? Password. It will have a password saved. And I want you to be clear about this. You don't need to know how right now, but you will have to implement it. The password has to be encrypted. I don't want you to be saving passwords in the database clear text. They have to be encrypted. So give itself enough space for an encrypted. I have assigned a total of 255 characters for my date for my password. It's not like I'm expecting 255 character passwords, but the encrypted version will use that many characters. What else? Manager ID. This is the ID of the employee that is manager, my manager. It's a foreign key to itself. Address. What's my address, my city, my state, my zip code? What's my pay rate? And the pay rate will be different depending on whether you're an exempt or a, a, um, an hourly. And what's my tax rate? Those are the attributes of my employee. Let's go into the department. The department is very simple. It's just a department code that identifies one department from the next and a name. Later on, I decided, you know, I want to add the location because sometimes the department makes sense depending on the location. And then finally, payment. Payment will have an ID. It's very important for general ledger to have an ID of a payment. Okay? That distinguishes one payment from the next. Unique. It has a regular rate that comes from the pay rate of the employee that got paid. It has an overtime rate, which is a calculation that you have to somehow come up with depending on the business rules of the company. Typically, overtime rate is one and a half times the regular rate. Okay, Tax percent. The tax percent has to be saved as part of the payment because the tax rate can change for one same employee from one year to the next. So you have to save that as part of the payment. Net pay. You have to save the net pay. And finally, the timesheet ID, which is the foreign key of the timesheet that this payment belongs to. Everybody clear of what I'm building? Only when you get down to this detail, you're ready to create your database. That's why I need you guys to please, within the next two weeks, fill out those functional requirements. I'm going to supply this function. This function is, I'm going to supply the payment for a specific timesheet. If you are doing that, you know you're going to need a payment entity. And you know you're going to have to build a payment table in the database. So. What's the result of this domain? The result of this domain is that each one of these main entities will become a table in the database. That each one of these attributes will become a field in the table of your database. So let's build it. Let's start with 
the timesheet? That's a good question. The question is, would it be different if your main entity was an employee and you refer to your timesheet as your other entity? Very good question. Excellent question. What would change in the relationship? What do you think it will change? First of all, does timesheet still need to, an ID to identify one from the next? Yes. Does employee need an ID to identify one from the next? Yes. Right now, the timesheet belongs to an employee. So the timesheet is the one that starts the relationship with the employee because the timesheet is the most important one. Okay? In this case, the timesheet belongs to the employee and therefore that information is saved inside the timesheet. How? How am I implementing that? How am I implementing the fact that the timesheet belongs to that employee? Through a foreign key. Who has the foreign key? The employee or the timesheet? The timesheet has the foreign key. Can you please tell me which one is the foreign key? Employee ID. So timesheet has the knowledge of who it belongs to. It belongs to employee ID, whatever. And it should match. This value in here should match to some ID of some employee in here. So the relationship is from the timesheet to the employee. Now let's go back to your question. Your question is, what if the employee is the main guy and you just want a relationship with the timesheet? You will take that timesheet, I'm sorry, that employee ID, move it out of the timesheet, and you will create inside the employee a timesheet ID. The timesheet ID will be a foreign key to the ID in timesheet table. So in this case, the employee has the knowledge of the one timesheet that it has. Now, what's wrong with this type of relationship in my particular case? What would happen if my employee has a foreign key to one and only one timesheet? Can't have more than one. That goes against my rules. My rule says that employees will create a timesheet every week. That's going to be a whole lot of timesheets. So I cannot save the timesheet ID in the employee because it's not going to allow me to do more than one. So what's the alternative? To save the employee ID in the timesheet because the timesheet will belong to only one employee. So that's how you simulate that relationship. So that's why you have to be very clear. Okay, hold on a second. How many employees do I have? How many timesheets? What's the relationship? You have to think about that relationship in your model, in your system. <coughs> Any questions? So how do I do that in here? First of all, I go to databases and I create a new database and I'm going to call it Timex. Please put the name of your database, some word, lower, lower case, no strange characters, similar to the main topic of your website. Okay? If you're doing a blog, put blog. If I'm, I have a title and a keyword in my in my in my project name. What is it? Online Timesheet System. That's the title. And what's the keyword? Timex. So everywhere you're going to see Timex. Timex means my online Timesheet System. Pick that. 
pick that for your project. So in my case, my database is going to be Timex. Okay? The collation, oh, this is in case you want to support internationalization and all that stuff. Just keep it uh, default. Okay? And let's create it. That's it. It's created. So somewhere in here, it's got to be a Timex. Here it is. Whoa! Wait a minute. Timex wasn't there. How come now it shows up? You guys know anything about Ajax? That's Ajax in action. Timex was not one of the databases on my left hand side. I went there and created it and now it shows up on my left hand side. How? Without refreshing the page, Ajax. Okay, so now I go into Timex. So I click Timex. How many tables do I have? None. So let's create my first table. Time sheets. Yes. Do it plural. Not book. Books. Not time sheet. Time sheets. Okay? Number of columns. Oh. Oh. So I'll have to go into my... You know what? I'm not going to build the whole thing in, in a matter of minutes. So I'm just going to put that I have three columns. The ID, the employee ID, and the status code. Okay? Just to keep it simple. So I'm going to say three. Of course you will do the whole thing. Alright. What's column name number one? ID. Yes. Always call it ID. Not timesheet ID or, or, or timesheet number or... No. ID. That way you know that ID, and that's, by the way, a key um, word in many of the frameworks that you're going to encounter out there when you try to build code automatically out of a database. ID means it's the key. Okay? So, ID. What is it going to be? What do you guys think it's going to be? It's an integer, right? Okay. What's going to be the default? None. And I want you to always click on auto increment. What does that mean? That the first record created will get the one. That the second created will get the two. Etc. Etc. You don't have to keep track of who's next. The database will keep track of who's next auto increment. That's typically the case for any keys. What else? Employee ID. Employee ID. Try to put the name of your fields camel cased no dots underscore dashes whatever many frameworks those are the frameworks that automatically create code out of a database will not like that okay so in my case lowercase employee camel case ID what is it what is employee ID an integer Yes, it's going to be an integer. <coughs> Is employee ID automatically auto incremented? What do you guys think? You think so? No. 
Employee ID is a foreign key. That means its value comes from somewhere else. That is a key. The key is auto-incremented. Foreign keys are not auto-incremented. Okay. And finally, status code. What do you guys think is status code? What is a timesheet status? You can pick whatever you want. You can say zero means pending, one means it's submitted, two means, or you can say P means pending, uh, S means submitted. The way that I implemented it in Timex is the first letter. So it's going to be what? A character correct. Did I see it? Did I miss it? Character. Okay. Oh, yes, you're right. Save it. No, that isn't. This is not okay. If column type is a num or set, please enter the values using this. Whatever. Oh, so status code. What is the length of the values? Right. All right. It created it. Where is it? Here. Timesheets. Honestly, I don't like the interface for the web. It's like, I don't know. I'd rather do it here. This is not Ajax, sorry. So, Timex will not show up in here unless you refresh. Now it shows. You double click on it and it becomes your default database. You open it and it shows the tables that you have created so far. You double click on it and it will show you the query that will execute and when you execute it, it will show you the records. So how would you add a table in here? This is how you add it. You right click on Timex and you say create new table and you are provided with a standalone GUI, very similar to the web. What's the new table? Timesheets. What's the new column? ID. What's the data type? Integer. Automatically knows that it's not null, auto-incremented. Next. I'm just going to do Oh, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have been timesheets. Should be an employee, right? I already created timesheets. Employees. Name. Bar chart 45. Uh, I've seen names longer than that, so 55. And that's it. Apply changes. This is the equivalent in SQL. Execute it. Whoa. And here it is. Employees. Now, I'm going to ask you to create your database and 10 records per table. How do you do that? Let's do it on the web. On the web, you have timesheets. You click on timesheets, and it will show you the columns or fields, right? And you can add records to it. Timesheets. No, um, employees. See employees? How many employees do I have? Zero. Okay, let's edit. I click on edit. And I say, 
one two and you get the point apply changes exit the edit now you have two records was that too difficult all right now let's switch to the website I'm going to refresh I do need to refresh because I have created um, from an external source here they are employees and timesheets so let's go into employees show I can't I can't see oh thank you yes I see it <laughs> here they are these are the records so you can actually edit them how do you insert where 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 top oh no, that that's when you want to insert a column. Value. Okay. So, for instance, you want to insert employee number three, right? And the value name is Jane Smith. Let's see if that this does it. Go. Insert. Go. It's already there, I guess. Browse. Yeah, Jane Smith. Yeah. I, 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 this this one is much more straightforward to me. Okay. Like I said, pick your poison. I don't care which one you choose. You have to create a database with all your tables, all your fields, and ten records per table. Oh, very good question, Stefan. What about pictures? What if one of the fields of your database, let's say, I think I, I, later on down the road I add something of that nature under employees. Um, let's go to employees. I'm going to edit the table and I'm going to add a picture. Okay. Picture, I can do it either two ways. I can actually take the GIF, PNG, or JPEG binary and put it inside the table, okay, into that picture field as a blob. And a blob is a whole bunch of binary code. Okay? You can do it that way. Or, the best way to do it is just save the name of the picture and you know that that name is going to be an image under your web content images folder yes that's a good point it could get huge which is why in your system you gotta be able to manipulate under images subfolders related to your users or whoever you are going in this case what I would do since the picture is of an employee under images I'll have the ID of the employee or the name of the employee as a folder and under that I will save the pictures of that employee very simple it's PHP code you guys will get to know how to upload a picture how to create a folder, how to do all this neat stuff that you need to know how to do in order to manipulate a website. For now, just worry about creating the database. Okay? So, <coughs> typically, you do not want to store blobs in your database, they get really fat. You don't want your database to be fat. You want it because you're going to do a lot of queries to it. Okay? So you you want it as lean as possible. And there's already enough content management systems, enough media servers that will take care of managing audio, video, pictures, documents and all that stuff for you.
don't store it in the database. Okay? Hold on. So what happens, I'm going to refresh. And I'm going to take a look at the employees. These are the employees, and I'm going to take a look at the timesheets. So suppose I want to... How do you create a new timesheet here? <laughs> it's not intuitive, I'm sorry. This insert? Okay. Timesheet. So, I am going to create a timesheet for employee Alvaro Escobar. Okay? The timesheet is going to be the first one. Who is go what is going to be the employee ID that I put in there? Alvaro Escobar's ID, which is the first one. So the first timesheet belongs to employee ID 1. This is how you have to save it. Otherwise, the data, the 10 records per table that you guys are going to create will not make sense. Okay? The data that you create has to make sense. And what's the status code? It's going to be P for pending. And I'm going to go. And then I'm going to go to timesheets. And there it is. So timesheet ID1 belongs to employee ID1. Who is employee ID1? You go to employees and you find, oh, employee ID1 is Alvaro Escobar. This is how you have to create your database. Please do not implement about us and contact us and history about us. I want real content. I want a real service provided by your by your website. Contact us and about us is not it. Okay? There's only 10 functional requirements of which login is one of them, registration is one of them. Come up with an, another 8 that are relevant, that are useful. Contact us and about us is just laziness.